ladies and gentlemen welcome back long time long time long time i miss you guys a little bit just playing uh my name is jonathan welcome to seven circles so this is gonna be a long video probably i'm not sure how long and i've been wanting to make this video for a while but it takes me a bit of time to get to this location and i can't really do it at night time because uh i could but there's a lot of coyotes out here and also because um, I'm not supposed to be out here at night. So I don't know if like, um, what do you call it? The park rangers or something like that are going to come around. But I want to talk to you about the concept of uh, the concept, not even a concept, the reality that earth is a garden. You know, a lot of us, we read the Bible. Um, we know the story of Adam and Eve. And be like, oh, we got kicked out of the Bible. We got, uh, not the Bible. We got kicked out of the garden. We got kicked out of the garden. And what I'm saying is that life is a garden. Is that this earth is a garden. And that also you are a garden. Your mind is a garden. So I want to show you guys something before I begin to talk. So you can kind of get a, a glimpse at where I'm at. Let me turn this camera around. Look at where I'm at. I'm gonna move the camera slow. All right. Look at all these beautiful trees, flowers. Look at these mountains, right? And you can see that it's basically just one big gigantic garden. But what you would notice is that if I do a, a, pan, a panorama, all right, I do a 360, that you got towns down there that could be I think that's Berkeley over there all right I think that right there is San Pablo all right look at that we can even get closer these are actual cities right towns all the way in the back you see the, the bay back there all the way in the back I don't know if you can see it that's San Francisco right there and it could be Oakland, I'm not sure. And this is pretty much, not even pretty much, this is our entire planet. This is the, the... Wait, let me get this, there we go. We named, we named one of these places, um, that's Berkeley, right? N named after somebody. We named another place, oh, that's Oakland the land of oak trees right like brooklyn used to have a whole lot of brooks you guys don't know that right not anymore brooklyn right you got places like uh delhi city founded by a guy named john john uh john delhi i think his name was i know his first name was john and so this is not real but it is real because we built up we, we built it up but really, this earth is just a garden. And how did all of these cities get into, come into manifestation? I'll tell you what. You got, you got bricks that make up the houses that came from the ground. They figure out the mine, right? This is why Buddha says all is mine. They figure out how to make bricks, send them in the sun. Right? Maybe they're better at different parts of the world. They get shipped over through a ship. Now we got bricks. How do we get, uh, you know, copper wires and and all of these other type of metals? You go deep inside of the ground. You find some type of ore. Maybe a gold ore, a copper ore, aluminum, whatever. You put it through a process of putting it through a lot of heat. And then all of a sudden, guess what? You got metal, right? You want this type of wood, that type of wood. You find a cherry tree, an oak tree, a pine tree. You chop it up. All of a sudden, you got wood. And you use the mine to make furniture. You use the mine to make logs. You got log cabins. You want glass? You take sand. You take sand. You heat it up to like 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. All of a sudden, guess what? 
You got glass. Just some heating sand up. You want cotton? You grow a plant? It gives off cotton, right? You got cotton. You make little threads out of it, and all of a sudden you sew it up, you stitch it up, you got cotton, you got clothes. The mind, all is mind. This is the first law of the hermetic principles. All is mind. The seven of them, right? Mind, vibration, correspondence, polarity, gender, cause and effect, and rhythm. We're going to focus on mind right now because this is the most powerful one. Our minds, your mind, my mind, and how powerful the mind is and what we're actually living on. We're living on nothing but a garden. We're living on a gigantic garden that was and that is constantly being built up by a collection of minds. That's all it is. Let's take a, a, another look at these places. See, it's hard to see the picture when you're living in the frame. In order to get a better perspective of the picture, you got to get outside the frame. This is, there we go. Some people live in here their whole entire life. You hear that? Some people live in here their whole entire life. That's the Home Depot right there. That little orange building. Look at the cars going back and forth, back and forth. Every day to your job, back and forth. It's hard to really see the picture when you live in the frame. It's hard to see the label when you're in the container. It's hard to see things when you're subjective all the time. That's why you got to become objective to get a better view. This is why birds are so intelligent, I believe, because they have the best perspective. We call it a bird's eye point of view. The power of our minds. The power of our minds. Incredibly powerful. Incredibly powerful. We make up things you know, these fake borders called China, a fake border called New York, a fake border called Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Massachusetts. We just draw a little line, right? Yugoslavia, um, Finland, Denmark, uh, Zimbabwe, Chad, Nigeria. These are all made up lines. Nicaragua, Honduras, Costa Rica. It's just one big, gigantic garden. One big, gigantic garden, first and foremost. Let that sink in. Really let that sink in, because I'm showing you right now. Tell me where are the lines? Where's the lines for San Francisco? It's just made up through somebody's mind. And since everything is mined, right? Let me put this on this stick. Give me a second. All right, since everything is the mind, just lets you know how incredibly powerful the mind is. And this is why, oh, my bad. I'm not even gonna edit that, leave it. And this is why you need to understand how your mind is being controlled if you want to live a more fruitful, free life. I talk about the realm a lot. And I'm big on acronyms, you're really big. The realm, right? Not even the realm, just realm. I talk about this a lot. I talk about it. Realm is R-E-A-L-M-M-M. -M -M. Imagine that you're here on this planet, let's say a million years ago, whatever, just some time span, and nothing else existed except for the garden. Nothing existed for the garden. Just you. 
Now all of a sudden, you got lots of people, lots of people. And they're like, you know what? Let's make up our own little town. We start making this town. You got one town over there. You got another group of people saying, hey, let's make a town over here. Another group of people saying, hey, let's make a town over here. And these towns, they create something called a realm. What is the realm? R-E-A-L-M-M-M. -M -M. First and foremost, they create these religions, these, these religions, right? The religions are a multitude of religions. And religions, they really do, they really do affect the way that we think, believe it or not. And they really do affect the way that we see our environment and the world. Let me sit down a little bit. The next thing that they do, or that they did, or that they are doing, is they created a education system. Some call it an indoctrination system. That's the E, right? R for religion, E for educational. And now, through, for 12 years, you're going through this educational system. This educational system. And that's also going to affect the way that you perceive the world. Because don't forget, your thoughts create your words. Your words create your actions. Your actions create your habits. Your habits create your character. Your character and your character creates your destiny. Thoughts create words. Words create actions. Actions create habits. Habits create character. Character creates destiny. So, if this is true, then what they did next was they created the agriculture system. They created a system of food. And I talked about this extensively in many of my videos. Maybe not so extensively, but a lot. And people become entrapped. The foods affect the way that we think. If you don't think they do, try going on a fast and notice the process of your thoughts. And then try introducing something like sugar into your diet. Processed sugar. Try introducing a piece of fruit. Try introducing different things and notice how it affects your thought patterns. And since thoughts create words, you're going to speak them. And your words create your actions. And your actions create your habits. And your habits create your character. And your character creates your, your destiny. Hey, this is why you got to understand and look at where you are actually living in from a bird's eye point of view. A bird's eye point of view. Again, look at this bird. I don't know if you can see it. Beautiful eagle flying over the city. I don't know if you can see it. Alright. So you got religion, R, E for educational, A for agriculture, and then you got law. You got laws. Tell me where are the laws out here? It's the laws of nature. That's it. I don't see any laws of man out here. I don't see a law telling you that you have to drink from a certain water fountain or eat, or you, you can only eat this type of grass because you're this type of color. That, that was a law back in the days. They have a law that was on the books in West Virginia where you can fornicate with your animal if it was under, yeah, you heard me right. You fornicate with your animal if it was under a certain weight. I think it was 30 pounds or something like that. There was a, there was laws um, in here in California, right, that you can't smoke marijuana. If you did, you would get arrested. Now, all of a sudden, they changed the laws. There was laws in New Jersey that if you sip your, if you slurp your soup in public, that you can get arrested. If you go, you can get arrested. There was laws... Uh, Back in the 1800s, that if you spit on the sidewalk, I think it was, you can get arrested. So many laws, but laws 
these are laws of man. These are man-made laws. These are just policies, right? That's why it's called politicians because they make up the policies, and that's why police and policy are spelt the exact same way. Just replace the e and replace the y, and you have policy. Police, p o l i c e. Policy, p o l i c y. So we know that this is the way that they begin to shape your thinking. Because now you're gonna say, "Oh, I can only drink from this water fountain." Thoughts create your words. Words create your actions. Actions create your habits. Habit is an acronym for having automatic behaviors ingrained thoroughly. H a b i t. Having automatic behaviors ingrained thoroughly. Right? They create your habits. Your habits create your character. You keep doing something over and over again. You become that thing, and then your character creates your destiny. And people wonder why. Why they are where they are. I can get big into habits, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that right now. And then, so now we got R for religion, E for educational, A for agriculture, and L for law. But then we have, and that's real, right? R E A L. But then we also have realm, M M M. So one M is the media. The media controls your thinking greatly. Greatly. Who's your favorite basketball team? Who's your favorite football team? Um, da 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 da. What's that from, right? What about this type of car? What about that type of car? All of this is not from this garden. All of this is from that. That. It's from this this matrix that we have created. It's from these towns, these cities, these these make believe things that we give so much credence to. Our society, our economy. Notice how economy. ECO echoes right off of ecology. ECO economy ecology. Notice how they're very closely related, and even how I say they echo off of one another. Echo EC right. Look at that. That over there. Those are cows over there. We should go and visit them. Maybe we will later. There's cow dunk all over the place. There's camel mouth, camel milk flowers all over the place. But anyway, let me get back into this, right? So, R for religion, E for educational, A for agriculture, L for law, M for media, and then M for monetary, the money. What keeps all of this going? I have to pay my bills. Gas prices are going up. Inflation, food prices are going up. I gotta save money to go on vacation. Gotta save money to go to college. I want this, that desire, this desire. I want this type of car. I want that type of car. I want this type of house. All of this, right? I work every single day. If I don't work, I get fired. Then what? I'm gonna be out on the streets. What am I gonna do? Not knowing that the real currency is you, your current. You are the real cur currency. That's the reason why Facebook, multi-billion dollar company, TikTok, all these social media platforms, YouTube, they're all free. But they're not really free because you are the currency that's actually generating some income. You. Your interaction, your data, your energy. Interesting, right? And then we got the last M. What's the last M? A lot of flies over here. The last M is medical, right? R for religion, E for educational, A for agriculture, L for law, M for media, M for monetary, and then M for medical. The seven structures and the medical system, which a lot of people say, oh, we need health care. Right? But they don't care about their health. Notice, notice the word play on that. Health care, but you don't care about your health. What's up, fly? This fly, he thinks he's fly, man. He ain't that fly. <laughs> dad jokes. I earned that. I earned the dad jokes. And so with the medical system, 
we really think that uh, not to say anything wrong with it, right? But there is uh, an agenda. There are things in it that are highly addictive. There is something called Big Pharma that introduced a lot of medicines with the base of them being made from petroleum products and other things of that nature that actually are detrimental and addictive You guys know the whole story. I don't need to go into all of it. This is just the first hermetic principle that your mind controls all. These these things that I just named, the religious, the educational, the agricultural, the law, the media, the monetary, and the medical, each one of those things, if you can be honest with yourself, they are affecting your thoughts. And if you can be honest with yourself, you can know that your thoughts create your words, right? Before you say anything, you have to think about it. It happens in a nanosecond. Right, a mill a millisecond. Right? Your thoughts create your words, your words create your actions. Right now you're doing it. That's why every time you move it's always in the past because you have you already thought about it. It's already it's already done. And this is and this is proven. If you can this is proven in the spiritual world that you can actually see other people's thoughts. And I'm not gonna get into that right now, but that's in a different video. This is proven. So your thoughts create your words, your words create your actions, your actions create your habits. Your habits create your character, and your character creates your destiny. So I ask you, what thoughts are you entertaining? What thoughts are you believing? Notice notice the difference when you go out in nature. I asked some people, I asked one of my uh, employees, how do you relieve stress, right? And she was like, I go out in nature. Just sitting there is a different frequency of thoughts. You know, I got these bags called Faraday bags, F A R A D A Y. Faraday was a scientist back when Tesla was, was around. And what what the Faraday does is that you could put devices like in the cage or whatever, and it blocks off the electro, what is it called? Electro, the EPM, electric pulse, electromagnetic pulse. EMP, EMP, electromagnetic pulse. It blocks it off, right? So I could take this phone, put it in the bag, and if somebody tries to call me, it would go directly to the voicemail and the phone wouldn't ring because it cuts off all of the uh, of the frequency from the phone, right? And so when I put my phones in this further day bag, guess what happens? I feel something open up inside of my mind. I feel something open up inside of my mind. This these cities that we live in, which is really a circuit, the city is a circuit. That's why if you get even higher and look at the actual cities, they look like circuits. They look like uh, a motherboard from a computer. Look at the way that they look at the way that they are spilled. And guess who's the electricity in the in the city? You are. I am. Because each cell in your body is zero point zero. Seven volts of electricity, or zero point zero zero seven. I gotta check that out. Which means that two cells in your body has as much electricity as a double A battery. We have potentially, I think, it's three hundred trillion or three hundred uh, billion, potentially volts of elect of, of power in our in our in, in our, our our own body. You know, when we plug things in our house, it's only hundred and twenty volts. You know, we plug a washing machine in, that's only 240 volts. Only 240. I'm saying that you have over 300 billion or 300 trillion potential volts of electricity. Where's that electricity going? It's, it's going to power things. It's going to places to digest food and a lot of these other things because of our lack of, our, our ignorance of how our relationship to the planet really is. A lot of this information might fly over your head. I don't know. I don't want to get too deep. Um, but I do want to say the first hermetic principle, right? The first one is that all is mine. All is mine. And who's controlling your mind? Is there any presidential election up here? In this beautiful garden? Is there any racist, racism up here in this beautiful garden? 
Are there, are there any laws up here from the, in this beautiful garden? Are there any tickets? Are there any this? Are there any that? No. A lot of people talk about how do you leave the matrix? How do you leave the simulation? Guess what? You leave it by leaving it. And you strengthen your connection with who you are. You strengthen your connection with this. And there's many ways to do that. Many ways to do that. Take your shoes off. Put your palms on the dirt as well too. Suck up that energy. Do some qigong. Stand in tree stand. Look at the sun. Just even just sit here and do nothing. These these trees, these plants, they don't have to do anything. They just have to be. And they automatically benefit. And the longer that they stay, the more benefits they have. This video is going long, and I'm gonna keep it going because I gotta talk to you about something else. The second hermetic principle, it could be the third, but I think it's the second, is that it's something called the law of correspondence or the principle of correspondence. And Billy Carson, he talks about this. Correspondence is as above so below as within so without so when you change inside of here things change outside of there this is correspondence right it corresponds to one another so exactly the way that the earth has chakras the way that the earth has energy the way that the earth is a place for many things. It's made up of a bunch of cells. As your body is as well. So your body is as well. We are a macro of the micro. And so I'm saying that because I was saying that the earth is one big garden. And everything that we're experiencing, whether good or bad, is just a projection of the mind. Minds that were here before and no longer here, and minds that are here right now. Right? That's all it is. How did this airplane get there? Again, how did these houses get there? How did the road get there? Where did the asphalt come from from the road? It came from crude oil deep in the earth. Where did the propane come from? Crude oil. Where did the gasoline come from? Crude oil. Where did the plastics come from? Crude oil. Where did the, the, the uh, I don't know, the, the natural gases come from, right? All these things came from in the earth. One big garden. 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 That's it. And so exactly the way that the earth is a garden so is your mind your mind is a garden as well too the law of correspondence your mind is a garden and you can plant anything inside of your mind now I want to talk about this because once you plant something in your mind that is called a concept right or we can call it a thought but let's call it a concept if you look at the word of conception which is concept with I O N at the end of it, right? Con concept, shun, Con right? If you look up the definition of concept, it says it's a thought or an idea. But it also says the act of making a baby. That's considered a conception, right? It could be a thought and or, or, or an idea, or the act of making a baby, or or when a baby is being born conception same word three different meanings but if you look at those meanings they are closely related because once you have an idea once you have a thought in your mind it's going to come into manifestation especially if it's repeated or held there long enough or has a great intensity a great energy behind it a great emotional which is that energy emotion right that great energy behind it it's gonna come into this realm these flies man but they ain't really bothering me they kind of are but not really just buzzing and so 
I, I, I want you to think about a lot of the words that we are using. A lot of the words that we are using. And I had a friend that opened this up to me, a great friend. And he said, which makes perfect sense to me, he said that we have subconsciously, subconsciously agreed to the terms and conditions of the contract. We've agreed to the terms and conditions of the words that people are speaking. If somebody cusses you out in a different language, you can look at that person and go, hey, how you doing? Because you don't know what it means. Right? The terms and conditions don't mean anything to you. But if somebody does it in the language that you understand, now all of a sudden you might have a reaction. And now all of a sudden the chemistry in your body produces an emotion that corresponds or counteracts that or uh, responds to that or reacts to that. And that can come in a different, you know, a multitude of ways. It can come through phys to f physicality and maybe wanting to fight. It can come through uh, verbal, maybe, you know, repeating something back. What do you call me? It can come through emotional. Ah! It can come through a different emotional. You get sad. You, you, you get happy or whatever. However you feel. That's because you agree to the terms and the conditions. That if I say this to you and and you and, and and we are on the same plane of what this word actually means now all of a sudden you take it as value you take it as value but if somebody was to say something to you let's say for instance if a child was to say something to you like called you some type of uh profanity word or whatever you might take it as oh they're ignorant they don't even know what they're saying they just got that from tv you don't give it a lot of value but if it was somebody like your mother or somebody like your, your 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 spouse and they call you the exact same thing, you give it more value because in your mind, you're thinking that, oh, wow, they really meant that. They, 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 they really understood the terms and the conditions. And so with every contract that we sign our signature to, which is our, our energy, the signature, right? That's why every signature is different because every energy is different. Every fingerprint is different. The fingerprint is the energy of our soul. Once we sign the contract, that's why even as a birth certificate, you put your finger or your footprint on it. Once we sign the contract, we're saying that we agree to the terms and conditions of this contract. And therefore, since you agree to the terms and the conditions, if you don't abide by them, then guess what? Now you have to reap the repercussions of that. Now you have to deal with the consequences of that. This is why anything you do in this realm, right? In the realm, Berkeley, San Francisco, Oakland, whatever, is that if you get a license, you sign in your name. That's a contract, right? If you get a ticket, you sign your name. If you don't sign the ticket, that the police officer or the policy the policy officer, again, policy and police are spelled the same way. You replace the E and the Y. If you don't sign it, then they put you in jail. They detain you, right? They detain your, you in a cell. They detain your cells in a cell. And then once you get detained, they ha you have to sign something as well, as well too. When you get a credit card, look at, they, they even give you terms and, and conditions. These are the terms and conditions. You got to sign, right? When you when you get a uh, 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 what is it, a social security card, you got to sign. It's a contract. Anything, it's a contract. There are many things. You go to court, you go to whatever. Contracts, 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 contracts. Even look at the money that you're using to spend. At the bottom of it, there's signatures on it. You have a check. You have to sign it. Otherwise, it's no good. It's no good until you put your energy on it to give it life. You, you follow me? You, you, feel what I, you feel what I'm saying? So, you can always change the contract. And a lot of people don't notice. 
And all of this stuff gets tied together once you actually really start to see it. I'm a, I'm a rural bridger. So I can look at many different topics, whether it's finances, whether if it's food in the hospitality industry, whether if it's exercise or this or that or whatever, yoga. I can tie all of it together because all of it's one. I see the connectivity of all of it. So, you know, I studied law a long time ago. You don't know this about me, but at one point I wanted to be a uh, FBI or the detective or something like that, right? And then my my uh, my higher self, or not even my higher self, just my, my guide told me, nah, don't do it. So I listened to it. But what I will tell you is that you can change any contract around. So let's say if you get a credit card and they say, hey, if you want this credit card, you got to sign this and then send it back in. You can read a contract. You can cross out certain things on the contract. Like if they say, hey, you have to, uh, you have, you know, a contract where you only have, uh, I don't know, what is it, 24.5%, right, interest if you don't pay. It's a lot. 24.5. You can cross out the 24.5 and you can put 12.2%. And then you can put your initials right whatever that is let's just say john doe a jd and you can circle it around crossing out the 25 the 24.5 and put 12.2 uh, 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 or 12.25 and then you can send it back and you sign your signature at the bottom and the credit card company they can agree to it or they can say no but if they agree to it now all of a sudden you don't have to pay the 24 percent anymore Right. If, if 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 you get a ticket, you can cross some things out on the ticket and then you can sign your signature and say, this is what I agree to. Right. You can do this with any contract that you want. You don't have to sign the contract exactly the way that the contract is typed up. You can alter it. You can say, I accept it, but I accept it under my conditions. It's called conditional acceptance i accept it but these are my conditions these are my new terms these are my new terms and my new conditions and the reason why i'm telling you this is because your mind is a garden and these words that we are using you can change the definition of these words around so that they can actually benefit you so that they don't enslave you so that you're no longer enslaved by the actual uh collective definition of the verbiage of of the words you can do this because you're god in essence so we talked about two of the hermetic principle laws maybe maybe that's what i do because i'm going on 40 minutes maybe i do this i don't know if this week or what but i haven't made videos in a while but these hermetic principles are important Right, and again, let me just name them really, really quickly. The law of the mind, number one. The law of correspondence, number two. Right, that we just talked about that. The law of vibration, everything's vibrating, number three. The law of polarities, number four. Everything has a polar opposite. Right, the law of gender, everything has a gender. Everything has a masculine and a feminine principle to it. Right, the law of um, uh, cause and effect. For every cause, there's an effect. For every action, there's a reaction. Right? When I inhale, I have to exhale. It happens naturally. Right? When I throw something up, it comes down. Cause and effect. Right? And then also the law of rhythm. Everything has a rhythm to it. The waves in the ocean, the ebbs and the flows. The wind, it blows. And then it stops. Um, the, the, the sun goes up, the sun comes down, right? Where we at? Right there. Uh, spring comes, then the summer comes. Then after summer, fall comes. After fall, winter comes. The law of rhythm. Plants come up, plants come down. These principles are awesome because it gives you a firm foundation of how to actually see things for what they are. And again, if you don't have a strong foundation, you can't be found. A lot of people have something called a law station. A law station, not a foundation. And they're trying to find themselves through a law station. And the law station, L-O-S-T, D, 
D-A-T-I-O-N, the law station, is what is taught by the realm, right? By the religions, the religions, the agriculture, I mean, the religion, the educational, the agriculture, the law, the media, the monetary, and the medical. But if you want a foundation, you need something that is that is true. You need something that you can build on. How are you going to build on something that is false? So, these are some awesome things that you can think about that I just kind of explained in this video. I appreciate you tuning in with me, but really, 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 really think about it. Really think about it. Anything, everything that I'm saying is not outlandish. It's, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's not anything that is so woo woo, so hard for anybody to understand. I'm just show, I'm pretty, I'm showing you. I'm showing you right now. Anybody can realize this stuff. Anybody. It doesn't take a scientist or a genius to figure these things out. But one thing that really stops people from understanding of what I'm saying and really stops people from actually taking control of their own minds and thinking for themselves is fear. Fear is the biggest thing, the biggest thing that prevents us from moving into new levels in our life. Fear is the biggest thing that stops us from growing from expanding fear which a lot of times is false evidence appearing real you're, you're immortal and I know you might not understand that right now but you are I just plant, plant, plant that seed inside of you you are immortal nothing can harm you nothing your body right your body is not who you are you're not your body. You're not your name, right? You're not even your mind. You have a mind, you have a body, you have a name. You're not your clothes. Who are you? What are you afraid of? Let the fear go. We let it go. We can grow. You want a strong foundation. Build your foundation on things that are true, not false. How do you know if something's true or not? You know something's true if it's indefinite, if it's not temporary. Things that are temporary are false. Things that are temporary are false. You want to come as close to the principle as, as possible. As close to the principle as possible to where eventually you can become the principle. And once you are the principal, that's it. Nothing can mess with you because you are the actual principal. Imagine if something tries to imagine if something tries to destroy a, um, I don't know, a principle. You can't destroy a principle because principles are principles. You can't you can't you can't destroy a principle. The only way that you can. I guess supersede a principle is to apply a higher principle. That's the only way. This is why you have people that can levitate. They understand the principle. This is why you have people that use the, le the levity. These things seem supernatural, but they're really as natural as nature is. You have people that can do all kinds of beautiful things that we would term supernatural when I mean, they really aren't it's just because they understand the principle they apply it you can become the very principle yourself it takes a little bit of effort 
It takes a little bit of discipline. It takes a little bit of consistency. It takes a little bit of determination. It takes a little bit of faith. It takes a little bit of pain. It takes a little bit of love. It takes a little bit of courage. It takes a little bit of all of these beautiful things, all these beautiful ingredients. But I tell you that it pays off. Because if you're if you are giving your life to this, there's nothing wrong with the city. There's nothing wrong with the town. There's nothing wrong with these things. But if you think that that, that this is reality and you have been mistaken. This right here. This this is just a collection of minds. That's all it is. It's just a collection of minds. It's just a circuit. A city and circuit. A lot of times it seems like a circus. Look at, look at San Francisco all the way in the back. It's cloudy out today, so you might can't see it. Look at the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, is that the Bay Bridge? I think that's the Bay Bridge. Look at that. That's the refinery for gases and things like that. We just made this stuff up. Look at the cross. Look at the traffic. We just made it up. We put so much energy and so much emphasis on it. Learn to think for yourself. You know, I think it was by uh, Henry Ford. Is that thinking is one of the hardest things to do. Which is why... Most men don't do it. Thinking is one of the hardest things to do, which is probably why most men don't do it. That was by Henry Ford. Thinking and having a thought in your head is not the same thing. Thinking is an art. Learn to think for yourself. Don't get caught up in the realm. You can be you can be in it, but not of it. You can be in the world, right? But not of it. Don't get caught up in the realm. R-E-A-L-M-M-M. -M -M. Religion, educational, agricultural, law, media, monetary, medical. Be careful. Be very, very careful. Be vigilant with the way that you move. And move in accordance with natural law. Recalibrate. Realign. Remind your mind of who you are. Don't forget who you are. You're not a carpenter. That's a character that you made up. You're not an electrician. That's a character that you made up. You're not a businessman. If you look at the word business, business and busyness are spelled the same way. So you're not a busy man. Or even business in Spanish is like negoto. So in Spanish it means negotiation. You're not, you're not this. right? You just created these characters. Because again, you're your habits create your character, your character create your destiny. These are all characters that we made up. We said, oh, we're this, and then we put on the costumes, right? Oh, I'm now a a fireman, right? I'm a fireman. Boom, 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 boom. Because I learned about this, I have the hose that's made from this material and the trucks and the sirens. And all of a sudden, I get a little ID that says I'm a fireman. And I said, I'm a fireman. I get paid for that. I get money for that. I'm a policeman. I got this. I can put you in jail. I can do this. I know these type of laws from the system. I'm a policeman. I'm a judge, right? I can bang the gavel. I'm a, I'm, I'm a electrician, right? I'm a teacher. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm a whatever. You can be anything you want to be. It's nothing wrong with none of those things. But what I'm saying is that create a character that you, that you really, really want to be. Or you just can dissolve all of it and just stay in the presence of I am. And then when you need to activate these characters, you can activate them. And then once you're done, go back to dissolving the character and remaining in the state of I am. 
My name is Jonathan. Thank you for tuning in to Seven Circles. It's been a minute. If you appreciate these long videos like this, let me know. Hope that you have a beautiful day, beautiful week, beautiful year, and a beautiful life. Until next time, peace.